Next to the Pazzi Chapel are the cloisters of Santa Croce, also built by Brunellesco some years later. I said that the Gothic cathedrals were hymns to divine light. These cloisters with their round arches, running races in their mirth, happily celebrate the light of human intelligence. And sitting in them, I found it quite easy to believe in man. When I first came here, nearly 50 years ago, I felt this is my true center. Well, twice it seemed that they were lost. Once at the end of the German occupation, and once when the floods came and there were fishes swimming where my feet are in the ambulatory. But so far, the forces of destruction have been defeated. Clarity, economy, elegance. These are the qualities that give distinction to a mathematical theory. And no doubt, early Renaissance architecture is based on a passion for mathematics, uh, particularly for geometry. Of course, uh, Gothic architects are designed on a geometrical basis, but it had been of immense complexity, as elaborate and as logical as scholastic philosophy. Nothing could be more geometrical than the Florentine Baptistry, which is one of the earliest buildings in the city. But the Renaissance added to this tradition of design all sorts of philosophical notions, including the idea that these forms must be applicable to the human body, that each, so to say, guaranteed the perfection of the other. There are dozens of drawings and engravings to demonstrate this proposition, of which the most famous is by Leonardo da Vinci. Mathematically, I'm afraid it's really a cheat, but aesthetically it has some meaning because the symmetry of the human body and the relation of one part of it to another do influence our sense of normal proportion. And philosophically, it contains the germ of an idea which might save us, if we could really believe it, that through proportion we can reconcile the two parts of our being, the physical and the intellectual. <laughs>